Spire. The member for Fadden. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I join the member for Melbourne Ports in providing some comment on the recent review of the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade Annual Report 2009-2010, and I join him in thanking the wonderful work of the Committee Secretariat for what they have done. Uh, the chair of the report, though, has been far too generous to the state of the current Department of Foreign Affairs, Defence and Trade under the austere stewardship of the current Foreign Minister, the member for Griffith. The department is becoming increasingly focused on Australia's bid for a seat on the UN Security Council to the detriment of so many other uh, areas that it needs to focus on. Uh, one of those important areas, of course, is our relationship with Indonesia, where the live trade debacle was a complete and utter fiasco, contributed in part uh, to DFAT, unfortunately, that has been utterly put to task by the Foreign Minister on a range of other matters. I'm sure Australia's beef producers will be interested to hear that the Foreign Minister is far more interested in getting a spot for two years on the UN Security Council than he is in representing the interests of thousands and thousands and thousands of Australian families in the north of Australia. Our relationship with neighbours such as PNG and Fiji remain important, but again are being left to deteriorate because of the Foreign Minister's unwaveringly and unexplainable obsession with trying to get Australia a two-year seat in the UN Security Council. His actions, frankly, are jeopardising Australia's place within the region and the world, not to put too much of a finer point on it. Perhaps in the words of the Shadow Foreign Affairs spokesman Julie Bishop, in the absence of a credible explanation, one can only assume it's an ego-driven campaign to satisfy Kevin Rudd's vanity." End quote. These sentiments have been backed up by a recently released Lowry Institute report that is frankly damning of DFAT and its minister. The report speaks of a broken department, a grossly inadequate diplomatic footprint with too few international posts and too many bureaucrats in Canberra. Indeed, the report states that the Australia has about 89 embassies and consulates compared to the OECD average of over 150. In the light of such numbers the report puts up, one can only assume that Lowry has got it right, that it is grossly and utterly inadequate. Morocco has an embassy in Australia, yet our footprint in Africa is slight to say the very least. An exceptionally low foreign language capability. Less than a quarter of DFAT staff spoke a second language and less than 10 per cent spoke an Asian language. Minister Rudd's obsession with obtaining a place in the UN Security Council is debilitating an overly already outstretched department which is failing to meet even basic demands, is what the Lowry Institute report states. Despite some improvements at the margins, DFAT still faces serious shortfalls. In fact, the Lowry report states Unless these deficiencies are remedied, our economic, political and security interests could be seriously jeopardised. Frightening words from an independent report looking at the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade under the stewardship of this Labor government. Unless these deficiencies are remedied, the report says, our economic, political and security interests could be seriously jeopardised. Well, one has to argue, what is 747 Kev doing flying around the world at the rate of twice that of any commensural minister in the history of our nation, and still we have an independent report saying that our interests could be seriously jeopardised? The report continues for a highly globalised country facing a more challenging external environment. Australia's diplomatic footprint remains too limited. Now, I'm sure Prime Minister Gillard is more than happy she is more than happy for Foreign Minister Rudd to be travelling around the world and, frankly, not in Australia. But it takes more than just Order. flying in and flying out, Foreign Minister Rudd, to maintain Order. close relationships with other nation states. The, the Lowry Institute poll goes on to say the real opportunity far exceeds the $23 million the cost. Time, I commend the report to the, the House time and I ask the government to correct the their deficiencies before it's has too late. Expired. The clerk.